Bonjour. 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 Right, we're recording. This is the last of our grammar thons. From next week, we speak, we do translation, we do live stuff, we do putting it all together. This is the last hardcore grammar one. And then we go at the pace that we go at when everybody starts putting it together. All right. All right. Let's make that really, really clear. All right. Good. So we're talking in today's class about times in English you say the word one and you're not referring to the noun. You're not saying the noun. Brie is wearing a bandana or a do-rag or whatever. She's got some cool red thing on her hair. That's a nice one. If somebody walked in the room and they didn't know what we're talking about, and I would just went, oh, Brie, that's a nice one. We don't know what it is. It's not a pronoun like the word it, you know, but it's, it's still pronominal by definition. Denise said, Luke, I need to for my friend's birthday. Oh, I tell you what this is really nice, Denise. We're going to say one, but we're, so again, out of context, nobody knows what you're saying. I might say, oh, well, my one, if I say my one, so without being puerile and vulgar, his my one's bigger than his one. When in life do we say that? We generally mean in a stupid penis way. But from that in life, if you say someone's one, someone's what? So we're talking daughters, OK? And somebody says, oh, well, you know, mine. Notice we don't always say my one. We say mine or yours. Oh, well, mine does the same thing, um, you know, whatever, yours, your one, his, his one. So again, we're referring to something, but we're not saying it, all right? Which one? Nobody knows what we're saying when we say which one. If, if, if Brendan comes to my house and I, in the morning, I go into the spare bedroom and I go, which one? And I've got a cup of tea in one hand and a, you know, a coffee percolator thing, whatever, you know, French press in the other hand. It's vis visibly, visibly, I know what we're referring to. And Brendan would go that. If I held up two tyres and I went, which one? I'm not saying, I'm not saying the word tie. If I say, right, OK, which one, which one? Which one? And I, I'm not saying the word tie, but, but, but you know, uh, Tia goes the orange one or whatever, whatever, whatever. OK, so this is what we're talking about in today's class. They're all going to be referring to nouns, which means most of them will need a gender, but you're not saying the noun. You're not saying the hair, the bandana, the man, the woman. You might go, but Lukey Lou, we've already done pronouns. Moto, nouveau, lo, la, le. So listen to what we call these things. Possessives, possessive pronouns. Demonstratives, demonstrative pronouns. Yeah. So as a general rule, if I said to all of you, could you please give me. So Brendan, if I said no, who's not spoken? Susan. If I said, Susan, give me a token adjective. Any adjective, what adjective would you go with? Just give me the first adjective you can think of. Give me an adjective. Nice. Perfect. Nice. Okay. So when we think of adjectives, we think the clear is, okay, it doesn't work in that context. Um, the dog is nice. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. My hair, my phone is modifying the word phone. It is a possessive adjective because it's modifying the word phone. Which tie, Luke? Um, this tie is a possessive, no, sorry, it's a demonstrative adjective because it accompanies the noun tie, this tie. This one, 
this one, the whole phrase, this one, is representing the tie. So it is a demonstrative pronoun. Um, you know, so you know pronouns as object pronouns like mutu nuvu. One. Oh. So he's frozen on everyone's, right? Uh, yes, I okay, just... Okay, okay, just making sure. <laughs> thought it was me. Are you there, Mara? Are you there? Are we back? Good, right. Yeah. So the okay, guy... So, Brendan, what colour is... Name me, what colour is the sofa in your house? Or a, you know, a something in your house? What colour is your chair? Cream. Green, did you say? Cream. Cream, 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 right. Okay. <clears throat> so, if I said... Um, just because it's you can use cream for this in French but it's a little bit less likely because it also means something else as well because it's a colour which is named after an object like, like a thing so let's just go give me another colour of another chair in your house other than cream um, uh, yellow right okay so say for example I said the yellow one OK, when you it's a rule, the first set of ones, when you have an adjective with one, just don't say one. How would you say the big? Brendan, if I was talking about a sofa and sofa is masculine, how would I say the big? The, the big, just the big. The grand. Imagine that I've said the big and I'm not allowed to say one. Brie, how would I say? a green and let's say we're talking about a dress and you want to say a green one somebody says brie what kind of bridesmaids dress have you got to wear for so-and-so's wedding and you say a green one green is an adjective and when you have adjectives like this you just don't say the word one but you need to make the gender choice so a <laughs> green so how would you say brie a green in a feminine way Une, Une verte. Gorgeous. So I would say to you, Brie, um, qu'est-ce que tu dois porter comme robe? Tu as pour, uh, pour tu as les, les, la robe de demoiselle d'honneur. What bridesmaid dress you've got to wear? Une verte. That means a green one. Okay. Susan, um, uh, the boys over there are my friends. Which boys? The French ones. Is French an adjective? Yes. We therefore just don't say the word one or ones, but we need to make it grammatically work for the French. So how would you say the French? Uh, en no, 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 the French. So, oh, right. oh, le. Look at me. Le. We're, uh, we're imagining that we're talking about boys. So we are saying the French and we're not allowed to say ones. So if we're talking about plural boys, how am I going to say the French? Plural masculine boys. Les France. Les. French. Les. And again. Les France. Say. Say me like you're not giving birth. Say me normally. Les Français. Thank you. That's it. That doesn't just mean the French. That means the French ones. The French ones. In context. Okay. Denise. Um. The two ladies over there really made me laugh at breakfast. We had such a giggle. Oh, yes. Which two ladies? Two ladies. The American ones. 
How would I say the American ones, Denise? Les Américains. No, ladies feminine. Mm -hmm. Les Américains. No, ladies feminine. Les Américaines. Les Américaines. Okay. The two ladies over there really made me laugh at breakfast. Les deux femmes là-bas m'ont fait rire, tu vois, euh, pour le petit déj. Ah oh oui, quelle femme, which ladies? Oh, les Américaines. If out of context you say les Américaines, it means American ladies. Like you could say American ladies, you know, normally receive uh, mandatory breast screening over the age of 45 in most states, whatever, whatever. If, you, if you're just speaking normally, fine, of course, les Américaines means, means, means American ladies. But if you're like the American ones, Tia, um, finish is a brilliant adjective in French because we've got two words for it. We can either say fanois or fanoise or fanlandais or fanlandaise. So if I say my friend Tia has got a nice accent and somebody says, which friend? Which friend? How am I going to say the Finnish one referring to you, who, pardon me, pointing, is singular and female? How would I say the Finnish one? You can choose whichever adjective you want, but I'm going to need the. So do you, do you see what I mean, guys? You're going to need the a or the the or the my, you know, whatever. So how would you say a T and my, my Finnish one for, for, for a lady? La finnoise. La fanoise. 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 La yeah, fanoise. You know, my friend here, the one that does the group. Oh, yeah, which one's that? Oh, the Finnish one. The, the Finn, although we don't often say, we decreasingly say the Spaniard, the Finn, any original adjectives that we used to have in English. So, we, we, as you know, in English, English speakers, if your word ends in an N, it automatically becomes a noun. So, the Canadian, the American, the German. But if it doesn't end in an N, we don't have it. We don't say like the French do we? The French would make it sound like the nation of France. We'd say like the Frenchman, the, the you know, the, the, the Englishman, you know, um, but we have old fashioned nouns for certain countries that, you know, we've got relationships with and history with and all of this business, like the Spaniard, but just increasingly we don't tend to use those, we just say the Spanish guy. But yeah, the Finn, she's a Finn, she's Finnish, um, the, fin, the Finnish one, La Finlandaise. Um, uh, Brendan, um, I'm going to wear my boots for horse riding. Which ones? My black ones. My black ones. How am I going to say my black ones? Le, 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 my, ba, 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 my. So to sum it up, for when you've got an adjective like this, you just delete the word ones. We still need to deal with my. Plural, I have two feet up, you know, very luckily. How would you say my black ones? Mes, mes noirs. That's it. And that scares you a lot. You're like, really? Are we done with that? Is that what it is? That's fine. Which shoes are you going to wear tonight, Luke, with the suit? See, my daughter and I disagree with this because in England, if you've got a nice grey blue, you can wear it with a black shoe. Because my daughter's predominantly in the States. She's like, oh, no, it's always like a brown shoe with a blue suit. I'm like, yeah, with your light blue, royal blue shit. But if it's like a grey blue suit, we can do black. So she'll say, which shoes are you going to wear with the blue suit? And I'll be like, the black ones, les noirs, my black ones, mes noirs. You know, it's an, um, you know, this, this is like a, a thing. All right. Good. So that's when we've got an adjective. Good. On to number two. Possessive pronouns as opposed to possessive adjectives. My dog, your dog, his dog, her dog. Can we hear the, the, the noun after the possessive? That is a possessive adjective. Why is it an adjective? Because it is then followed by a noun, all right? So, Brie, would you just say for me, go all the way down the list, my dad, your dad, his or her dad, our dad, your plural dad, and their dad. So, the basic Possessives. So how would you say my dad, Brie? Mon père. Nice. Remember to close your palate and to put it all through in one go. Mon père. Mon père. That's it. We are going to be ready for next week when we start blurring. Mon père. Oui, alors effectivement, je viens de parler de mon père. We ain't going to say mon père. Lovely, Brie. Your dad or, you know, your dad? Ton père. Smooth it down for me, my darling. Ton, Ton père. père. That's it. His or her dad. Notice his or her dad is the same French. His or her dad? 
son père. Lovely, nice join. Our father, our dad. Actually, the reason I went to say our father is because in French, our dad, our father, it's the same as the prayer, the our, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be the night. You know, it's, it's the same. It, this is what you call the prayer. So how do you say our dad? Notre père. Lovely, soften the tea, notre père. Notre père. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Denise, let's switch to you. Your um, father, plural, if I'm talking to you guys. Uh, vos pères. Uh, 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 your father, singular. So two people with uh, their one dad. Votre père. Votre, not votre. Votre is somewhere else. It isn't here. Go again. Okay. Uh, your father. And again. Uh, votre père. No, no, no. I've told you once you need to learn to listen to vowels. Votre père. Go again. Votre père. Yeah. No, you're not listening to me. You desperately want to say another word, and it's the fourth time I've corrected you. Listen, votre père. Let me hear the word. Votre père. No, learn to listen. Votre, votre. Votre. Right, copy me on the first word. Votre. Just say vot. Vot. Now say votre. Votre. Lovely. Don't say votre, because that is French elsewhere. Go back straight to what is a vowel, people? It is a location in the body. It is not a mouthing. It is a vibration of choice. So go straight to it for me, Denise, my darling. Just say votre. Votre. It's clear. It's not clear. You're going. Vl. Say for me not like a knot in a piece of string. Say not. Not. Now start it with a V. Vot. Vot. Yeah, it's a bit British sounding, but that's fine. So now say votre. Votre. Lovely. Now say vote as in, you know, somebody decided to vote for the president, whatever. Now say vote. Vote. Now make that votre, which is a different word. OK, vote. so think vot, which isn't a word. And what does vot sound like? It sounds like it sounds like young Frankenstein when the woman's like, you know, like what do you want? You know, it sounds like some, you know, vot. Yeah. So votre. What's their father, please? Uh, Votre père. No, no, no. Their father. Le, le, uh, le père. Nice accent. Go smoothly again. Leur père. Le père. Work hard in the brain. Don't work in the mouth. Leur père. Le père. Uh, uh, the still. Blah, blah. Is it all one word? Leur père. Push on the chest. Join it together. Leur père. Push on the chest. Big chest, no mouth. Big chest, no mouth. Leur père. Le père. It's still. Blah, blah. So the vowels are gorgeous, but it's still blut blut. If you're pushing on the chest properly for me, it will come across as one word. Leur père. Leur père. Lovely, lovely. The basic ass trick, which works really well, is to imagine it's a fucking surname. Mr. and Mrs. Leur père. Mr. and Mrs. Leur père. Yeah. You know, your son Jamal's waiting for you. You know, whatever. You know, you know, whatever. Good. What letters did we have, Brendan? If you could go down that list again, so mon, ton, son. I oh, know we're just doing the masculines, you know. Mon, ton, son, notre, votre, and leur. Could you just give me the first consonant, not letter, that I heard in all of that list, Brendan? So what's the first consonant in mon? What's the first consonant sound I hear? M. M. Consonant, I apologise. The sound. The sound. M. That's it. In ton, what's the sound? D. Good. In son, what's the sound? De. Good. In notre, what's the sound? De. In votre, what's the sound? De. In leur, what's the sound? Le. So we're left with m, t, s, n, v, l. Right. A very common feature, guys, of all we doing, everything we're doing today, is going to be if you ain't got the noun, you might need the word the. If you ain't got the noun, you might need the word the. So when we say my one or mine or your one or yours, do you all of you understand that when you say that, you need to make a choice on the gender? Because when you say, or, and, and the singularity and the plurality, because when you say my one or mine, you're referring to the thing that you're on about. Oh shit, it's raining, says Denise. Don't worry, I've got an umbrella. Do you want to borrow mine? When I say mine or my one, I know I mean umbrella. 
you understand? Yeah. So do you all understand that by the time we say mine or yours, we are referring in our mind to a specific noun? Do you all get that? If you don't, please say no and I'll go over it again. All right. So for mine, yours and whatever, you are going to in French say the one of mine, the one of yours, the one of his, the one of ours, whatever. So will you all just, and this might sound really patronising, will you all just say le la le, the male, the feminine, the plural, le la le. Le la le. Le la le. Lovely. Tia, could you please say for me, I come? From the verb venir, could you just please say for me, I come? Je viens. Could you not bang it and could you slide between it? But that was nice. Nice twang, je viens. Go. Je viens. That was identical to the previous time. <laughs> Can you not bang bien, je viens, smoothly? Je viens. That was literally identical to the previous time. Smooth them together. Je viens. Je viens. Smooth line. It might seem premature to push you that hard, but no, don't go. Je viens. Okay. You wouldn't say I come from the studio. You'd say where well, je viens. You don't go. Je viens. Don't bang me. I love that you all love French, but don't be in love with French to the point that you need to bang it. All right. Good. Save that for other people. So um, what's tier would be they come. Single, soft, plural, hard. What is they come? Il. Il vient. Il vient. What, uh, Susan, would vient be as a sound without the v? So what's vient without the v sound at the beginning? Yeah. Nice yeah. work. If you feel some gravel in your throat, go again. You have got a very clear voice in English, which means you favour consonants. Be clear as day where you're going with the vowel. So go for me. And that means a geographical vibration somewhere in your from here to chest needs to vibrate. I used to say totem pole, but, you know, now I don't want to be accused of appropriation. So taking from the wisdom of the First Nation, we're going to say ya. So save me ya. Ya. Lovely. Now say vien, which is the day form, and get rid of the v. With, so if I said vien and I got rid of the v, what would I be left with there? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So we've got ya and yen. Susan, sticker m at the beginning of ya, what am I left with? Yeah. Sticker m at the beginning of yen, what am I left with? Oh, m yen. Lovely, mien. Sticker yeah. t at the beginning of ya, ya. Sticker t at the beginning of ya. Of, of ya. To yen. In one go, my darling. Yeah. Excellent. Stick a, which also, side note, is the verb tenir to hold. So when you say tiens, it means hold this. Yeah. Stick a t at the beginning of yen. What does it give me? Tien. Lovely. Denise. Stick a s at the beginning of ya. What does it give me in one go? Tien. Nice and clear. Nice clear vowel. Stick a s at the beginning of I can't even say beginning. If you speak French and then you go, oh yeah, you've got to use your mouth in English. I forget. <laughs> at the beginning of so stick a s at the beginning of yen. What's that going to give me? Sien. Sien, make sure we get the right vowel. Sien. Good. So to say my one, you're not going to hear the plurality because all we're doing is sticking an S on the end. So my one, if it's something masculine, le mien, blue, blue. Sorry, gender non-binary, I'm not excluding you, but French just doesn't allow for it in this. So le mien, my one, masculine. La mienne. Pink, pink, la mienne. My one's singular, uh, plural, um, masculine, les miens. My one's feminine, les miennes. Don't think of the spelling, but M-I-E-N-S, M-I-E-N-N-E, -E M-I-E-N-N-E, -E M-I-E-N-S, M-I-E-N-N-E-S. But don't think about it. You've got ya and yen, male or female. Le mien, la mienne, les miens, les miennes. Everybody just copy me. Le mien. Le mien. Le mien. Le mien. La Le mienne. Mien. La mienne. La mienne. The masculine pro, la mienne. La mienne. Lovely. La mienne. La mienne. The same shit with the T. Brendan, how would you say your one if I'm speaking about something masculine, singular? 
Tom. Brendan, you're one if I'm speaking about something masculine and singular. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Le, 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 le tien. Nice, that's better. Your one, Brendan, if I'm speaking about something feminine. La tienne. No, don't la over articulate. Tienne. Don't over articulate. Say it with the vowels, la, don't say it with the teeth. La, la, tienne, la tienne. Look at me. La tienne. La tienne. La tienne. La tienne. We do not need to do this. Beware, guys. I might enunciate when I speak to help you because I am teaching. Copy my French, don't copy my English. Yeah? Copy my French, don't copy my English. Um, Brie rings me. Hey, Brie, how are you? How's life? I ain't going to go, hello, Brian, how are you? That's not how we speak. But as a teacher, I'm going, I'm making the point clear for you by doing this. Don't copy that in the French. Le mien, la mienne, le tien, la tienne. So, Brendan, how would I say your ones if it was something feminine? Uh, la, la, la tienne. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You guys have got two choices. You've got to decide which word the. What are you basing the word the on? Is it masculine? Is it feminine? Or is it plural? So if I'm saying your ones, it, what's the only word that I can have at the beginning? Le. Spot on, good man. And if I'm saying your ones and it's feminine. So in other words, I don't need to make a plural choice in the second half because the pronunciation is just based on gender. Tien, tien, mien, mien, tien, tien. So if I'm going to your ones something feminine, what's the, how would I say your ones something feminine? Les, sorry, les, les tien. That's les tien. it. That's it. Um, tia. Her one singular about something masculine. Her one about something masculine. Tia. Le sien. That's it. The fact that she's a lady has got bugger all to do with it. It's the fact that the object that we're on about is masculine. Le sien. Denise, his one, his one, but about something feminine, like a house. His one, singular, his, his one. La sien. La sienne. Yeah. La sienne. That's it. Okay, good. Um, um, this is really niche, but this helped somebody once. I think Princess Anne is amazing. The woman does so much work and whatever. And I don't know if any of you remember Enya in the 80s with like Orinoco flow. Brie wouldn't. She's young and full of life and hope. But I used to think, Anne, who's more feminine in a traditional way? Princess Anne or Enya? So N is your feminine sound and A is your very sort of forthright and masculine sort of whatever. Not that I'm saying strength and capability is a masculine concept. But yeah, so A, Yen. OK, good. Then we get to the bottom three that, that you all will love because there ain't no male or female. Let's go to Denise with this on purpose. Denise, say for me exactly the word I'm about to give you. Notre. Not. Don't Not. change your pissing vowel. Copy Auntie Lukey. Not. Just copy me. Not. Not. Perfect. Notre. Notre. Good. Don't drift towards note because that is a different thing. So when we had vote and vote, vote didn't mean shit, but vote obviously meant, you know, the suffrage act of electing somebody, you know. Not is a word in English. I do not understand. Note a piece of paper or, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, you know, H on about C, D, E. Yes, Luke, what a comprehensive knowledge of the Western news musical system you have. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C again. A note, all right? You know, so say for me, notre. Notre. Good. Notre. Notre. Good. So when we say our and then the noun, so Brie says our project at the moment, notre. It's not, like I cannot. And when we say our one, we it's got an accent over the O. So it's le notre, la notre. It goes to note, like the word note, like 
you know, a musical note. All right. So, Denise, how would you say referring to a masculine one and all you've got to do is worry about the, um, the, the word the? How would you say our one? Referring to a masculine thing. Look at me. What did I bloody tell you people you need to think of first? You need to come up with the bloody word the. I've told you. You deal with the. You've got two decisions to make people. The, the, and then the other word. Masculine thing. Think about it. If I'm saying the next word, how am I? Sh so when I've got mia and mien, tia and tien, tia and tien, I can show the masculinity and the femininity. On the bottom three, I've got nowhere of showing it apart from this first word, the. So for all of these, I need the word the. I did say that. So could you please say our one referring to something masculine, Denise? Go. Le nôtre. Spot on. Our one referring to something feminine, singular. Feminine, singular, Denise, our one. So like our house, our, not our house, which would be notre maison. Yeah. But our one referring to the feminine house, Denise, our one. La nôtre. Nicely joined on the diaphragm. La nôtre. We're going to go somewhere. La nôtre. Uh, on va chez toi. We're going to your house. No, no, no. La nôtre. Our one. You know, fine. That's French. Brendan, same token. You plural. Guys, be very clear. When you say you plural, it could be you plurals singular thing. Or it could be you singulars plural thing. All right. So, Brendan, speaking to a couple of sisters. Yeah. How would you say your one? If we're referring to their house, your one, if we're referring to their house, house being feminine. Le, le tien. Bugger off. What is you plural going to be? Are we in the T's or the V's, Brendan? T's. Good, le, wait. Le, Go on then. Le, le, le vôtre. Damn fucking still. What did Auntie Susan, what did Auntie Denise just teach us? What do we do when we've got the bloody noun present? Vot. What do we do when we haven't got the noun present? We have to change the first bit. It's got an accent over the O. So we don't, so go slowly and join it, as I just congratulated Denise on. Both these words need to be joined. Don't speak to me in your north of the wall, nasty little voice. So say for me, the, say for me, the, the one of yours, if that makes sense to you, the one of yours. I know you've all got out up there, you've got now to fucking live with, but basically imagine you own something and say the one of yours, off you go. Le vôtre. Stand still. I'm on about house. What gender is house? Masculine, not feminine. I've, linguists, listen. I've told everybody six times now house is feminine. What gender is house, Brendan? Feminine. So what's the pissing word I'm going to use first? Oh, la. Good girl. Wake up. Lovely. And what's the word I'm going to use second? Vôtre. No. Stand still. I do not repeat myself. I'm so fucking bored right now. What do you do for a president? Don't say impeach. What do you do? <laughs> I did not have sexual relations. <laughs> what did you oh. do? Do you remember when we thought that was a problematic president? How things change. Um, so did what do we do for a president, Brendan? What do we do? We vo vote. Lovely. So am I making this quite clear, ladies and gentlemen? If you've got the noun, not and vote. So notre président, votre président. If you haven't got the noun and you're referring to it, le, la, le, notre, le, la, le, votre. Got me? If it's not got the noun, you go up. So could you please say, referring to two sisters, I'm thinking Judy Dench and Maggie Smith in Ladies in Lavender, could you say your one, referring to their house and houses? What gender is house, Brendan? Feminine. I should bloody well hope so. So say for me, your one, talking to two ladies. La vôtre. That first word is sounding the same. La, la, la vôtre. It, that, sorry, I apologise. The second word, the, the vowel is sounding the same. La vôtre. No, it's sounding like, the, it's sounding like vôtre. Say for me, what do we, do you vote for a president or do you vote for a president? Vote, oh, vote, oh, vote, la vôtre. I've explained this. This ain't we, this ain't our, first, ain't our first radio, rodeo. All right, go again. Your one, plural. 
La vôtre. That's it. Not votre. Why is this great? Because it tells me who is still focusing on consonants and not on vowels. All right. Good. Number six, fucking class piece of piss. Le leur, la leur, les leur. It's that easy. Same word, no difference from the normal, no problem at all. So, Tia, how would you say their ones, plural? So, th their and also their things, plural. So, how would you say their ones? Les leurs. That's it. Tia, referring to a masculine dog, my one is bigger than your one. Referring to a masculine dog. Le mien est plus grand que le tien. Gorgeous. Denise, referring to a feminine house. Um, John's house is smaller than your one. Imagine I'm speaking to a you singular, a you singular. Informal. John's house is smaller than your one, or John's house is smaller than yours. Off you go. How do we do possessives when we've got a name? The house of John. Okay. Uh, um, la... I'm loving that you're carrying the word on while you're thinking. Clap, 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 clap. That's what we like. We don't want that, Brendan. The house of John. Off you go, the house of John. Uh, la maison de Jean. Nice accent. Did anybody feel there that they couldn't hear that? No. Did you hear that we go via the vowels? Yes. La maison de Jean, feminine, is smaller, is more small. Uh, uh, la maison de Jean est plus, pe plus petite. Good, plus petit, well done. We don't say pet, we say petit. Van, que, your one. I'm talking to a you singular with a feminine. Choose your the and choose your second half and show me in the second half that it's your one, feminine. Uh, que, uh, que la tienne. Nice, now go again. People, no matter what your sentence is, do not move on. No matter how self-congratulatory you feel until you've said it sounding like, well, here's a really random idea, human speech. If it don't sound human, don't move on. So save me, uh, Denise. Uh, la maison de Jean est plus petite que la tienne. La maison de Jean est plus petite que la tienne. Mouth closed, sl chest slide, off you go, Susan. Uh, la, la maison de Jean est plus petite que la tienne. Good. Do not stop. Chest. Good. Susan. Our one is more expensive. Let's make it our one feminine. Our one is more expensive than Luke's house. Our one is more expensive than Luke's house. Talking la, about yeah. La nôtre est plus chère que I forgot the last. What did I say? There's no such thing as I forgot. There's only I didn't fucking listen. What did I say? I'm not really mean that. I'm not being beastly. You didn't fucking listen. What did I just say to Auntie Denise? I said, if you have a possessive, you say the house of Luke. Bree's hair, looking very nice. The hair of Bree. Brendan's attitude. The attitude of Brendan. OK, attitude is one of the words that we use in ballet that you might want to watch the ballet vocab videos, but not yet. You bitches have got enough to do for the moment. But if I say Brendan's dog, the dog of Brendan. This is in most European languages. My mother's house. La casa de mi madre, the house of my mother. You know, it's how we do it. What we do in English, and we are spoilt. Yeah, it is what, it's what is known as the Saxon genitive. Yeah, the, the apostrophe S, Luke's house, all right? All right, so in other words, how would I say, Auntie Susan, Luke's house, the house of Luke? 
la maison de Luc. Lovely. Now, what I liked there was that you didn't dwell on de, because we don't dwell on prepositions. We are nowhere near looking at which words we spend speed and time on, but it's not too far away. So good. Brie, no, let's crack on with the next bit. Let's crack on. So, so far, guys, we've had, if we've had an adjective, we've just said we get rid of the word one. If we've got a possessive, le mien, la mienne, les miens, les miennes, le tien, les, la tienne, les tiens, les tiennes, le, um, le sien, la sienne, les siens, les siennes, le nôtre, la nôtre, les nôtres, le vôtre, la vôtre, les vôtres, le leur, la leur, les leurs. I could be beastly and say, where else, Brendan, have we come across le leur together? Where else in French thus far on this exciting pilgrimage that we're on together have you come across le leur together in our journey so far? Indirect pronouns. That's correct, young lady. So if I said I give them it, je le leur donne. It's when you've got the direct and the indirect pronoun together. Lovely. Great. On to the next one. You will all like this one because it's quick. From last week, Tia, how do I say, hang on, my daughter's just messaging me once. Um, how do I say, um, it sounds sarcastic and amusing, I don't want to miss it. How would I say, Brent, um, Tia, the, um, the, um, the pen I sign the contract with? The pen I sign the contract with. The pen I sign the contract with. How do I say that, Tia? Remember to speak posh. How do I say the pen I sign the contract with? Le stylo avec lequel uh, je signe le contrat. Lovely. So we've already come across lequel. Notice it's a theme this week that we've said if you don't have the main noun mentioned, you might find yourself using a the. And I told you last week that there's two times in French that you are going to use um, basically lequel, laquelle, speak English, lequel, speak French, lequel, laquelle, lequel. Number one, if you are using a preposition, um, you know, um, uh, if you um, if you um, if you if you said, for example, the man, the, the 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 company I work for, the company for which la société pour laquelle, so you can use it in a sentence as long as it is accompanied by another preposition. À lequel becoming auquel, de lequel becoming duquel. You ladies and gents did that last week. The one other time that you can use lequel, laquelle, lequel is when you are saying the word which one or which ones, where there is no, uh, uh, um, okay, which is when there's no, there's no other noun. So if Bree says, um, I'm going to wear that green dress I told you about, Luke. If I said, Brie, which dress, notice the word dress, Brie, is in the sentence. How do I say in two words, which dress? Raquel. Uh, have I still got the proper word for dress in my phrase? So, in other words, Kel, if it's got the noun after it, or even a couple of words after it, like, what is your favourite restaurant? Quel est ton restaurant? Préféré. If it's got the proper mentioned thing after it, Kel's fine. If it hasn't got the proper mentioned thing after it in full, we need a the before it. So if I'm saying which dress and you're saying the word dress, Brie, how do I say which dress? Kel robe. Fucking perfect, because Rob is there. All right. If I say you say, oh, Luke, I'm wearing that green dress that I got as the bridesmaid dress again. And I go, oh, which one? We both know, Brie, you and I in our conversation, that we are referring to the female bride's dress. You know, the, 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 the green um, bridesmaid's dress. So um, if I said, which one? Notice, like all the other shit we've been doing, I need the word the, 
But I now need a gender again, don't I? Because I'm talking about the word. Which one on this occasion is going to be referring to dress, which is feminine? You don't need to know the gender of the word dress when you say quelle robe. Because Q-U-E-L, Q-U-E-L-S, Q-U-E-L-L-E, Q-U-E-L-L-E-S, they all sound the freaking same. But if I said which one, Brie, which is feminine, how would I say which one? Laquelle. That's it. Well done. Brie, I say the boy over there is my brother. OK, I have three brothers. The boy over there is my brother. How do I say which boy? In two words, which boy, boy, boy. How do I say which boy? Quel garçon. Correct, Brie, because the noun of boy is still present. All right. How would I say the big one? So I'm six foot one. My brother's six foot two. I did a lot of ballet and didn't eat so much. <laughs> so um, and that's a stupid fucking thing. But if I said which if, if I said the big one, going back to the first chapter that we did today, how would I in two words, please, Brie, say the big one? The grand. There we go. Notice in French, grand could mean tall. Yeah. Tyra Banks, Naomi Campbell, you know, Kate Moss is shorter, isn't she? You know, um, Cindy Crawford. There's not a scrap of fat on any of them, but you'd still say that they are grand because they're tall, you know, to do catwalk modelling, aren't they? So. Lovely. Grand and grand it doesn't necessarily mean big that way in French. It's it's just tall, right? If I said which one, referring to my brother, how would I say which one, Brie? Lequel. Good. Now notice, people, I can use lequel on its own to talk about people. I cannot use lequel to talk about a person with a preposition. Brendan, how do you say the man I live with? Do you say l'homme avec qui or l'homme avec lequel? Which one do you use with a preposition, Brendan? How do you say the man I live with? Is it l'homme avec qui or l'homme avec lequel? Avec, 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 oh, l'homme avec. Don't worry, we only did two hours of it last week. L'homme avec what? Qui. That's right. When you are using prepositions, what did I tell you? Pretend that your ass is Oscar Wilde. The gentleman with whom I live. Do we say the gentleman with which I live? Do we say that in English? The gentleman no, with which I live? No, no we don't. Same. No, we don't. So can you see the difference, guys? If you're using a preposition, stick to fucking key. If you're using which one, look out. All right. Denise, do one for me. So say for me, the girls over there are my friends. Les filles là-bas, les filles là-bas sont mes amis. Whatever. How would I say, Denise, which girls? Which girls? How would you say that? Uh, quelle fille? Nice join. How would I say the French ones? No, let's make them English. The English ones. How would I say the English ones, Denise? Uh, les Anglais. Feminine. Les Anglaises. That's it. Ha imagine I'd not said the English ones. How would I say which ones? Which ones? Lesquelles. That's nice. All right, be clear? Good. The ones I live with, we'll talk about those I live with in just a minute. Good. So that is my lequel, laquelle, lesquelles as a standalone question. As a standalone question. Right. Next one is another quick one. Very, very easy. Brendan, no, Tia, say for me, I do it. How do you say I do it? We've got one more category after this, people. We're doing really well. How do you say I do it? Je fais. Great. How, so the it there as a pronoun. So this is when we have got a pronoun for a definite article thing. I do it. Yeah. If you have, if you think of some, some, this is what I think is rather gorgeous in Spanish. Some is the plural of a. So I'm walking through a forest. I'm looking for a tree. That makes it sound like I'm going to pee. Okay, I meant to take a picture of. I'm walking through a forest. I'm looking for a tree. I'm looking for the tree. 
where I, you know, once carved somebody's initials, a specific tree. The plural of a tree is some trees. I'm looking for some trees. Doesn't matter which trees. The plural of the tree is the trees, plural, specific, the plural. So the specific is the and the plural. And the um, uh, indefinite is a and some. So some can be as a pronoun a non-specific amount of a substance. So I go to Bree's and I go, Bree, I'm making some like brownies and shit. Have you got any flour? Because I really need some. If it's I need it, that's specific. I need some. It's a non-specific. So it's either an amount. So if flour is something that you can sort of say a non-specific amount, I'm just going to take a cup or a scoop or a whatever. Or if it's your sum, so for example, I really like grapes, so I'm going to buy some. Your sum there is a series of individual fully formed grapes, rather like a nondescript amount of bleh, whatever. So forget it. Either way, that's a sum. Some and one in French are the pronoun en, en, en. Here are some facts about this for you guys before next week. Rule number one. Listen, E-N is not O-N. On is a slang, is, is an alternative word for we. E-N is a pronoun. It goes before a verb. It represents something else. Point number two. On is what you use as standard if your verb otherwise used a, otherwise used a de. So, for example, what do you think of the situation? Qu'est-ce que tu penses de la situation? Qu'est-ce que tu en penses? So, if you're getting rid of the word de and what it comes after it, you're going to use en a lot of the time. Not always for people, but you will use it. So, en is busy as fuck. Point number three, very quickly, in other words, next week, you will be using ABC verbs, which is clever verbs that Brits and Americans don't normally like to get round to very quickly, which is when you have a reflexive verb with the verb and then the de or the a. I rather charmingly often call them reflexive verbs with a dick because ain't no one going to forget that. And when you have a reflexive verb with the de, you will use don, like we spoke about last week, if you reverse it. But if you're getting rid of the de thing, you'll use an on which is why you will have already seen scanning French from the distance that you're all sat at. Je m'en, tu t'en, il son, the, the S apostrophe in the E-N, because you are using this pronoun en with the reflexive. So, for example, I remember the situation. Je me souviens de la situation. I remember it. Je m'en souviens. So, in other words, all of the above are completely legitimate usages of the word en. We ain't on about that. We are just literally talking about en as the pronoun form of some. Not some as in the noun, so not some. So um, out of interest, Brendan, how would I say some coffee? Some coffee. De café. That would be some coffees plural, but what would be some coffees masculine singular? Du, du café. That's right. So guys, this is known as the partitive. So a really good video to watch on this would be day versus lay. When do you say de café? When do you say le café? When do you say du café? I'm not going to talk about it now, but if you watch day, D-E-S versus lay, L-E-S, that video talks about it. So in other words, some coffee, like we've been doing in this video, guys, will say the word some and then follow with a noun. Brie could go, oh, Luke, I'm going out tonight. I need some clothes from my house because I didn't know I was going to be going out. I need to go back and get them. Some clothes, fine. Des vêtements. But if Bree says, right, I need some. OK, do you have any, have you, you got to change your clothes, Bree, because we're going to go out for a drink. <sighs> yeah, I need some. No, no, no. Drive me home. Drive me home because I haven't got what I've got. You know, no, I don't feel ready. I want to go back. No problem, Bree. We'll wait for you outside. So I need some. Notice that this some is also a pronoun. We're not saying some freaking clothes, some milk, some whatever. So when you use some as a pronoun, it will be en, en. Our theme of the day is one. One will also as a pronoun be en, but you will often pop 
a or un on the end of the sentence. So I need some, I need one. How it generally works is if the question involved plural and you are staying in plural, you use on. So Brendan says to me, Luke, do you want some coffee? Tu veux du café? And I say, yes, I want some. Oui, j'en veux. On is some. J'en veux. Not je le veux. J'en veux. I want some. Brendan says, do you want a banana, Luke? I've got a shitload of bananas. You know, I'm not going to make banana bread. They're going to go off. Do you want a banana? Est-ce que tu veux une banane? Most lazily people will say, I've already got one. J'en ai. I have one. Because the question, but the question was about a singular. The answer is about a singular. So people can say, oh, strictly speaking, Brett, Luke, do you want some bananas? I've got an absolute load of them. Est-ce que tu veux des bananes? I've got one, thank you. J'en ai une. I, of them, have one. So you will still often hear an un and an un at the end of the sentence, but en, en, is your one as a pronoun. It's all I'm going to give you. So, for example, he's going to buy one. Il va en acheter. Not il va l'acheter, so an en. We'll do more about that when we come to en, but I just need to mention that in this video. Final section. This shit is a fucker. Focus, I beg you. And I cannot tell you how this next section will really separate the girls from the women, the women from the girls and the men from the boys when it comes to French. There are the amount of Americans and Australians and Brits that get this completely cleanly are there's about four of you. So honestly, honestly, focus. We are talking about the C word. I don't mean my favorite C word. <laughs> we are talking about ça, ce, cette, celle, celui. So, so, see, so, we see, so, 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 all right. So, you can do this, people. You just need to do the following you are going to mind map four, three, four. Will you all just with your fingers say four, three, four? Did you see that my hands just gone into spasm because I'm an idiot? Um, and a doctor gave me some bad stuff. So, say for me four, three, four. I can't do it. Would you just say for me four, three, four? Oh my god, I can't even do that. Would you just say four, three, four? Four, three, four. Four, three, four. Good. Right. So, Brie, this is demonstrative. Could you all, and I know it's rude to point, but could you all just point at me? Just all point at me. Give me the Uncle Sam. Your country needs you. Just point at me. All right. So, if you say this boy, this girl, this house, we are demonstrating which house with our finger. This is known as the demonstrative. Brie, what did we call something, whether it's possessive, whether it's all kinds of things, what did we call something that accompanied and that, that modified a noun? We called it an adjective. Or did we call it an adjective? Adjective, right. That's it. And yeah. I said to you that you will think that nice and happy are adjective, but my is a form of adjective. My house. It's, a, it's modifying the noun. So this boy, this house is a demonstrative adjective. You can still hear the word house, you can still hear the word boy, but you are demonstrating which house? This house, that house, okay? That is a demonstrative adjective. Most of you tend to know these. Let's see if you don't, there's no shame. Brie, how would you say this boy? Masculine singular, this boy. Ce garçon. So. So C E so don't write these down, people, because I've got a sheet for you which will be included in the homework. So ce garçon. We will need that ce in a moment. Hold on to it. Masculine ce garçon. Brie, how would we say this house? And as Bren Bren will tell you, house is feminine. So Brie, would you please say this house? Cette maison. C E double T E, cette maison. Brie, would you please say these houses, plural? These houses. Cell maison. Pause. How do you say the houses, plural? La maison. Plural? Uh, les maisons. Nice. How do you say my houses, plural? Mes maisons. How do you say these houses, plural? Make it rhyme. 
Says maison. Uh, 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 Save maison. That's it. Sorry. So if the word doesn't have a vowel, say maison. Brie, how would you say these children, which start with um? I was going to say the rather suspicious sentence, all children start with an open mouth, but that sounds really, really suspicious. So children starts with an open mouth. Enfant. Don't think vowel, because that means you visualize. So how would you say these children? Off you go. How would you say these children, Brie? Ces enfants. Lovely. The one you will forget. How would you say this object? Object being masculine, but starting with an open mouth. So we don't say ce objet, we say ce objet. Cet objet, spelt C E T. Okay. Similar words would be new. We don't say a nouveau homme, we say nouvel homme, spelt with one L. We don't say an old man, we say a an, vieil an homme, spelt with one L. We don't say a handsome man, we don't say a beau homme, we say a bel homme, spelt with one L. So other words do something similar. So, in other words, um, uh, if I said this, give me again, this this object, masculine set of... Set of G. Lovely. So those first four are when they are accompanied with the noun. Is everybody clear that those words would need the, yeah, Susan, Denise, Brendan, Tia, you've got it. It's when it's got the noun after it. All right. Good. Not to be confused with sell. No, 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 no. One point before we move on, and I'm going to come to Susan. Those four that we've just done, there isn't any difference in French between this man, set on, and that man, set on. This and that, it means the same thing. The only thing you can add is here and there. And we use hyphen C, which is short for ici, and hyphen la. So Susan, say for me this man, just plain and simple, say for me this man, Susan. Set on. Nice accent. This man here, we tend not to say the C as often as we say the la. But if I wanted to be really clear and say this man here, how would I say this man here? Set on C, say for me. Set on C. Hyphen C, this man there, set on la. Give me that one. Oh, set on la. Remember the C and the la, people, because in a minute it's going to come back and bite us on the ass. All right. So our first four were so. Focus on the vowel, Denise. So, set, say, and set. If you focus on the consonant, you'll be trapped in a C of sus, sus, sus. You'll be trapped in a C of the letter C. Sus, sus, sus. Okay. Then what came after the four? After the four, we had what, Brendan? We had. Linguist fucking listen. Sit down. Denise, what came after the four? We went four, then what did we go to? Four, three, four. Thank you, Denise. Linguists, listen, guys, I'm not being mean. I want you to absorb. You've got a language to absorb. Do you think you're going to do that at the, space, the ratio of one thing per 10 minutes? Learn to absorb. Train your brain. It's muscle. All right. Good. Denise, now we're looking at three words that can exist on their own. And they can start the sentence. They can end the sentence and they can be said on their own. They have no gender. They are merely referring to concepts. They bring in a small amount of geography. They are never going to be human beings. They are referring to single concept ideas or very basic gesturing to physical objects in the space. Denise, what is my absolute basic bitch word for that? I like that. J'aime. Ça. Thank you. C. Cedilla. Ah. That can start a sentence. That annoys me. Like when people don't listen, Bren Bren. Ça m'énerve. I like that. J'aime ça. It's very commonly the word for it that evades all of you when you are referring to a verbal action. So Brendan shows me his lovely kitchen. He said, Luke, do you like my kitchen? I've just painted it. It's beautiful. The word it will be L because we're referring to the feminine kitchen. Oh, elle est belle. 
Brendan has showed me his living room. He's just painted it. It's beautiful. Il est beau, because we've just said the word living room. We walk 